Pat, pat, pat. Grateful, pat on the back. Grateful. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> oh my God, this is but so fun. funny because like <laughs> on, literally like a year ago when we first met, you were exactly. like, I don't nah. want that. You're like, yeah. you're like, oh, I yeah. never. Welcome to the Asian Soup Podcast. This is your co-host Jules. And this is your co-host Rox. The Asian Soup Podcast is your cozy space on the internet where we share and discover stories about one another. We chat about a range of topics from personal growth, relationships, careers, and much more. Come sit with us and get nourished. Okay, so today we're going to jump straight into it. Our final episode for the season. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know we would have seasons, but we were... We are now uh, 25 episodes (laughs) in a season, which is quite nice, I think. It's a nice number. And yeah, like 25 seasons already. 25 seasons? Oh, uh, 25 25 episodes episodes already. (laughs) I don't know. I feel a bit reflective and grateful. And how are you feeling about it all? I'm still thinking. I feel like like I'm Mm. ready to reset. That's that's how I'm feeling. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. I know a few friends that are just like, they're just so done with this year. Mm -hmm. It's been pretty hard. Like we've been coming out of a pandemic and I think like because we're in our 30s as well, there's also like life changes and all that kind of stuff. So it's not like when it was in our 20s where it used to be like, yeah, just, you know, party and have fun, you know. We've got like adult (laughs) stuff to do (laughs) and think about. Yeah, it's yeah. been a long year, I feel. But yeah, I'm excited for like just reflecting on it today Mm-mm. together and yeah. chatting about New Year's resolutions mm-hmm. and things like that. I'm reflecting on the past year. So speaking of New Year's resolutions, is that something that you you do or create or whatever at the end of the year? Is that like a rocks thing to do? Oh, I mean... I have grown up like journaling and stuff, but I'm not very regular now that I'm older, which I should get better at. That's probably one thing if I had those traditional kind of New Year's resolutions is to journal more. But generally, New Year's resolutions, like I will reflect and hope to do certain things the next year, but I'm generally pretty loose about it. Like, you know, eat more healthy. Mm try to exercise a bit more I'll have a routine like it's very I I don't think they're very specific which is why uh, I don't know if it's very successful but yeah last year when I met you you told me about your theming ah for the year Mm -mm. and um I thought that was a good way to go about it and last year my well this year the past year my theme that I set myself Mm -hmm from after speaking with you was like mm-hmm. letting go of shame mm. and I haven't succeeded yeah. in that but I feel like thinking about next year I know I'm jumping ahead here but I mm. feel like <laughs> thinking about next year I am might just flip it and just focus on confidence or pride mm. like being more proud of who I am because it's kind of like the opposite of shame if I if I haven't let that go yet, maybe I need to work on being more proud of myself or, you know, something yeah. like that. But, yeah, so it was inspired by you having oh, a theme. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but on the back from past me because, you know, I haven't really stuck with my theme, mm-hmm. but that was like a tip I was given, I don't know, from somebody, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, those themes are good, but it is hard to sort of like stick to it. Yeah. But I love that you – you took on your old theme and then you're turning your focus on the positives more than the negatives, like letting go of shame. Even Mm. that as a theme, it implies that there is so much shame. It's yeah. You know, it's a a cloud of shame around you. Yeah. Whereas like flipping that around and saying, actually, you know, I want to focus on what, what I what I feel confident about. Mm-hmm. Like that's really nice. I'll try. It's an upgrade. It's like a theme <laughs> 2.0. We'll see. I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the times that's how it happens, like with mm-hmm. the resolutions or themes that you create. A lot of the times like it's an evolution. Yeah. It's an evolution and it builds on from the previous 
like here. And I yeah. thought this episode would be really cool if we could say sort of what we want and then, you know, a few years later when we listen to it, we're like, why did oh. we even want that? <laughs> we'll probably laugh at ourselves. Yeah, somehow. right. So it'll be interesting to reflect or listen back yeah. to this episode, I think, when we're yeah. in our 40s. Yeah, totally. I 40s. think there's so many, yeah, we, we grow more and more every year, right? Mm-hmm. How about you? Do you usually uh, have themes or New Year's resolutions? Yes. Yeah, so well, I can't remember if I used to have them when I was younger. I think by the time I needed New Year's resolutions, like it was too late. I haven't thought about it. Do you know what I mean? Like someone's like, you're at some like New Year's, Eve party and they're like, oh, what are your news resolutions? And, and everyone like, says something. Yeah, I'll just steal someone else's yeah. like, oh, you know, because I haven't really thought it through. Yeah. Uh, but I think like more towards the, you know, last few years, I try to think about it more and I try to always like, you know, before at least like a month before the year ends, I try to reflect and try and journal more mm-hmm. and I try and be more, I don't know, like – grateful but also do a year, like a recap of the year and also like think about what I want next year so I think it sort of evolved from like not having one being too late to have one and having a bit of FOMO mm-hmm. to having more thought around it I just think it's nice you know like yeah. in December here you have the crickets in the background and it's warm and it's yeah. festive and we have the mm-hmm. best Decembers here yeah, I would yeah. say it's, it's like best. summer gives you energy almost yeah, exactly. right to do stuff yeah. and socialize and see everyone yeah so you see people yeah. and I don't know you get into a different mode different the holiday moods, yeah. mode and I think yeah being able to just you know write all those things down, what you're grateful for. It's, yeah, it's a nice little practice for me. So I also journal and I like reading back on like those those journal entries as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I kind of do. Not, it's not perfect and it's never the same. With themes, I think the theme for me last year and also this year sort of carried through is, I haven't really stuck to it, but mine is to be grounded Mm-hmm. and I don't know everyone else might take that and you know In you mean way. different yeah. Yeah. you know different things to different people but to me I think it was more just about you know I get I can get so carried away in things and get a bit you know uh I guess I can get, I'm very excitable and, you know, if there's oh something God, I shiny. See, I can see that in you. It's so you. It's so me, you, right? You, I get so excited. just dive into anything yeah. that if this is interesting to you at yeah. that moment. You're yeah. 100%. percent yeah, i just go yeah. for it. Yeah. But then what ha- ends up happening is sometimes you can lose sight of like the bigger picture mm. and what's really, really important. So that's what sort of what being grounded is for me. And I think, yeah, okay, that's it. I could go on and on and on, but that's think, sort of my like main one. Do you feel like you want to continue that into next year? Next year? So are, are we talking still, about next year? Like, I don't know, because mm. you were doing that last year to yeah. this year. Do you feel like you're ready to move on to another theme next year or you're still taking some time to think about it? I think being grounded is always going to be one for me. Like, yeah, I like yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if I will have a new theme that would – override this theme but I think yeah being grounded that one's kind of there to stay for a bit Mm. I think even though it is the end of the year and a start of new year and Mm. new year's resolutions and stuff there's all this yeah yeah like I think you know it's a happy time and stuff like it is not always a happy time for everyone Mm, and then it's just because there's these expectations of resolutions and resetting goals like it doesn't mean everyone is at that point at that right at that second if you know what I mean but it is a nice time of the year when like you know the calendar year actually ends so it forces you to kind of you know reset but yeah just wanted to put that out there yeah no I'm really glad you mentioned that because I know a lot of people do feel a bit maybe lonelier or it's harder for them during like the whole like the festive season Mm -hmm. 
But I think like, you know, with this whole resolution, New Year's resolutions or like reflections thing, it's like, it's not real. I mean, you do celebrate. for yourself. But yeah, yeah. It, it's how whatever makes sense for you at mm-hmm. that time of your life. Mm. But I think it's always nice to write something down. That's true. Even whatever it is, whatever you're feeling, even mm-hmm. if you're feeling crappy or maybe you've had a great year, whatever it is, like writing it down and p- keeping a record of it so that future self can, your future self can go back and be like, oh, 2022 me was like this actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I always like asking people what they were doing. Well, you know, older people like my parents or something, what mm. they were doing yeah. at that age or that yeah. year. Like, yeah. It's like a little time capsule. Yeah. Yeah. So 2022, I don't expect you to answer this question perfectly at all because it's hard to answer this I think but what was 2022 like for you Rox? Uh, I, I, I had a little think about it like just outside before and something I don't know if it's even a word but something I just just came to mind was like homey because mm. I felt like this year was you know start of the year was when I moved into my place and last yeah. weekend you dropped by and it was just like, wow, I'm really, I felt like really lucky to have moved back to Sydney last year, but we had only moved into our apartment, uh, me and my partner into our apartment early this year. So it felt like it was a year of slowly building our little home together. Mm. So I felt like that was like my year, I feel. Mm. Like aside from work and stuff like that, it yeah. felt like I remember being like, oh, you know, I can't wait to move out, out of my parents' place because when I first came back, I lived with my parents for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, just really grateful to have like my own yeah. space <laughs> and Aww. and um, sharing it with, yeah, my now fiancé, which is crazy to say ah, if we're fiance. talking about like the year, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So just like that was a big change. But mm-hmm. yeah, feeling very homey, like nested, you know, like yeah. just, yeah, I felt like that was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so good. That's, yeah, yeah that I was just thinking that that is your is a word. Year. Yeah. <laughs> homey, homey is homey. a word. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like this whole year you were just building your home. Yeah, just slowly, right? Yeah, like, like all the plants, <laughs> the couch, <laughs> the couch. It's not perfect. Like it's not, you know, a designer place like I would do. It's not like that. It's just like a safe place, you mm. know. It's so nice. I don't know, just to have a bit more space than in Hong Kong because we were living in a little box. So mm-hmm. so anything is better than when yeah. we were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I remember when like Rox and Simeon like – when I first hung out with them, it was when yeah. they had just come back from Hong Kong. Yeah. And then Simeon just kept saying, there's just so much space here. <laughs> like exactly. so much space. Yeah. It's so spacious. <laughs> like you always emphasize that. I know we're that. so like obsessed with space <laughs> yeah. because of what we didn't have. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, having like an oven in a kitchen is like, whoa, because we didn't have an oven yeah. in Hong Kong. And we're mm. like... You know, having a normal size fridge, we're like, whoa, yeah, yeah, and yeah. a stove with four pot plate things. Like, yeah. you know, who has yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so silly, but it was like nice yeah, as well. Yeah. 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 How about you? Yeah. So I had to think about this question as well. Mm-hmm. And I think I sort of compared this year with like the other years of my life. And I felt like this year was a year of sort of just staying put, Mm -hmm. just staying put and sort of building on my career. I feel like Mm -hmm. that's what I've been doing this year and a little bit of last year is like putting a strong focus on my career and trying to build something there. Mm -hmm. And yes, I think that's what this year was for me. Do you feel like it was more like you know, putting your head down, working, or do you feel like 
like more, more building your career? Like, would you, how could you put a word to that? One word? One or two. One or two words, like building. Like mm-hmm. Maybe that's what it is, building. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just building my career. And what I mean by staying put, mm-hmm. I mean like staying at home. So I've been mm-hmm. living at home. Mm-hmm. And yeah, not going to lie, like I've definitely had a strong desire to move out, but I think I've just stayed put and I just thought now's not, yeah, now's not the time. Let's just focus on career and work and yeah that's sort of what this year has been Mm -hmm. for me yeah I see that I see that as well you see that yeah Yeah. because sometimes it's like there's times in your life where you want everything to happen at at once and there's just it not everything can happen at once Mm -hmm. do you know Mm -hmm. what I mean Mm -hmm. it's like when I was at my parents and I wanted to move out it's like we're not ready to move out yet Mm -hmm. or our place wasn't ready it's just like it'll happen yeah um I'll just f- focus on what I can control now but yeah you've been working very hard this year I feel on your yeah. career so I do think like yeah. I have been building on my career for a while but I mm-hmm. feel like this year is the year that I felt like oh it you know it's kind of paying off mm. yeah and I feel like you've I don't know, for me, <laughs> it's not about me, but yeah. I feel like you've um, gained a bit more confidence mm. in your career and like acknowledging, you know, your efforts and what you mm. can do. So, yeah, I think it's, so. It's good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So next question is, what was the biggest change for you this year? I think the biggest change for me was starting a new job. Mm. So I guess like I'm going to be talking about work a lot because that was sort of a big big part. part, But yeah, I would say that was probably the biggest change, like leaving a role and then starting a new one. Do you feel like it was easy hard like do you feel like you you grew from it or I feel like I've definitely grown from it I don't know if it was easy actually it wasn't easy it wasn't easy looking back I had like a career coach and everything do you Mm -hmm. remember yeah yeah yeah. I couldn't make the decision I felt so confused and so lost so I actually had to really like rely on all my support system at the time Mm -hmm. I think the main reason was because like I had only stayed at my previous role for eight months Mm. and I wasn't sure if that was too short. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like the biggest dilemma. Like, should I stay or should I not stay? I'm changing like industry a little bit from like a SaaS to Mm -hmm. e-commerce. So I was thinking, oh, is it, am I making the right move? But yeah, I remember it was really not hard. And in my diary, I have like a huge pros and cons list (laughs) because I couldn't decide. Um, But looking back now, I'm so glad I made that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really happy that I did that, even though it was scary at the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely scary. Like, I guess the reason I ask is because, like, the listeners might not know. Like, Mm. I I remember those times and it's like, even though you say, oh, yeah, I I just changed new job. (laughs) Like, you tell that to people, but if if – it's a big deal. Like it's a big mm. change, you know, like it's, yeah. resigning is so scary. Yeah. Resigning is yeah. scary and then starting a new job is scary yeah. and reasons for leaving yeah. or, you know, all that. Yeah. It's just, it's just a lot to think yeah. about. I think for some people it might be easier, but it really depends on like your reasons why. Yeah. And for me it was really hard and yeah, yeah I don't know. It's not but easy. Yeah, you know, rocks because yeah. it's not there easy. For me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Any any big change is scary. Yeah, and um, especially career, but it's yeah. ex- exciting as well. Yeah, yeah. Another uh, sort of big, big change. change. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's a big change, but like, I don't know. The whole idea of like having children and marriage—that's always going to be a big topic for me. Mm-hmm. And I think like. Definitely more now. The idea of having children or whether to get married or mm. all that, it's all settling down. Like mm. 
I feel like there's like a due date or something like looming. <laughs> It's like, well, if not like next you're year, about it more. I don't know. I'm or? like, if it's not next year, then when is it going to be the year after? If it's not, then when? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Is that no, you know when. <laughs> just to just make a move. No, I'm this isn't even like a. I'm not even answering the question, but like no, but the biggest the change what is that? in you. Yeah, the change, the change in, in me. You, change in your thoughts. Yeah, so I do feel like there is a shift. Shift. Yeah. yeah. In the sense that, like, I now think you're like, thinking about it. Yeah, like I think there needs to be like some time frame thought mm. through because <laughs> oh my god, this is so fu- funny because like <laughs> on, literally like a year ago when we first met, you were exactly. like, "I don't nah. want that." You're like, yeah. "You're like, oh, I yeah, never, true. I never ever wanted that." And I'm like, true, "Oh true, yeah, true. that's 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 <laughs> so different to me because I've always yeah. wanted it." It's like we we're just so different. Yeah, but I yeah, definitely feel like. I've been influenced a lot by the people around me. Uh-huh. So having like Rhoda's sister, like have a baby and, mm-hmm. you know, other people around me think about having children mm-hmm. or have children. And it's like, oh, cool. Like that is really nice. And yeah, that, yeah, I don't know. Do I want that? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe. So yeah, I guess it is a big change. It's a big change. Yeah. When, you, yeah. when you talk about like the shift in thinking, wait, yeah, is there anything yeah. else? Oh, I just wanted to add, like, I think through this podcast as well, it's helped me. It, you know, we were forced to talk about these topics, right? I know. And it's, it's so weird. Yeah. And Rox, you know, she's, so Rox says to me, like, oh, you know, after this episode, I really changed the way I think about this, right? But I'm the same as well. Like I, I'll because I'll come, cro- I'll come really strong. Like on my opinions, like nah, 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 yeah, proposals, yeah. nah, whatever. But then yeah. I'm like, what the hell's like? Maybe it's, what's so wrong with that? And I challenge myself, like especially hearing yourself say a certain thing. Mm. You're like, hey, hang why on, did I say that. Yeah, why? Or why did I think that at exactly? The time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's so interesting. Just wanted to add that. What about you? Did you want to? Let's hear what the biggest change I for feel like you what was. You, yeah, I feel like what you said about like your shift in mindset, I guess, mm. in what you want yeah. is really interesting because I, I I told you that I – you it was like two weeks ago. So I can't even talk properly because it's exciting. But, yeah, Julia – Jules was like, oh – you've changed <laughs> like you said something like <laughs> you've changed a lot like you just said something like that and I was like what do you mean and then because like last year when she met me and like my idea of like marriage and wedding was so different like I yeah. I, I did grow up thinking like oh yeah I would love to have you know a fairy tale wedding mm-hmm. or well, not a fairy tale wedding but just you know like a normal size big wedding and yeah. I don't know. It just felt like important to me. Like a proposal was important. And I feel like after I got engaged this year, which I'm really happy about, I just, and after going to a lot of weddings as well. Uh, maybe that's a, let me just cut in here. Rox went to like six eight, wedding, eight, oh, eight weddings this year. Eight or not. Yeah. And maybe like, a ninth one, but yeah, eight. How many of them were total. overseas? Two. Two were overseas. And one interstate. Two interstate. Okay, so for half of them weren't even in Sydney. Yeah. So, so I mean, like, it's it's hard. Like, I don't know why I'm. I don't know why I changed. I don't know. But originally, yeah. I, I love going to weddings and I mm. love being a guest. And I, I, you know, had the best time at my friends' weddings. I was like bridesmaid and maid of honor. Like, it was beautiful mm. like just seeing everyone's different you know big days but then you know when when the time came for my oh, proposal which mm. we already did a whole episode about but then now now that we're you know a few months in we're actually planning like a small signing with family yeah my idea of marriage and weddings changed. I feel like I f- care more about the marriage and family part more so than the wedding because I feel mm. like the wedding is just one day mm. and marriage is, marriage is your whole life. life. Like yeah. I think that's the important part. Yeah. But, yeah, everyone's so different and I, yeah. I just, yeah, I seriously don't know. I just changed like how I thought. And then I guess a shift in 
you know, focusing more on like my finances and, you know, chatting about money isn't something that is easy for me because I haven't historically been great with money. (laughs) So I easily get like defensive when chatting about money. Like it's a hard topic. You know, it's like, oh, did I spend too much on this this month? Mm. Or, you know, just trying to be disciplined and being able to talk about it is a big change in me. Mm. So I feel like it's it's good. Mm. I feel like we talk about money pretty openly. Like yeah. not so much on the podcast, yeah, but yeah, between but with us. Each other. Yeah, yeah. As like, yeah, it's important as well. And yeah, I think I feel feel a bit more comfortable like mm. just Me too. Yeah. Being more open about it. Yeah. Work wise, I think I didn't change jobs, but um because COVID ended I guess going back to the office a bit more, Mm. uh, I know that I was super nervous at the beginning. Like I had almost social work anxiety. Like I don't know how to say hi to people. But now that I kind of forced myself to go once or twice a week, it's it's been a bit more manageable. So I don't feel so introverted and shy i know i know we have a podcast but yeah people are, probably people are like, like oh you're not shy yeah you have, have a like, podcast it's, it's weird i just i am actually so awkward and shy in person yeah i can't imagine it but from the way you describe it i'm like oh actually Rox is pretty awkward <laughs> i can be I yeah can like be. you can be you yeah can like be. when i overthink it i'm like mm-hmm. oh you know yeah but yeah, there's some changes. There's some big changes. I, this is yeah. why I do love having like these chats at the end of the year. Yeah. You know. Cause a lot has changed. A lot has changed. Like you have to kind of sit down and think about it and chat about it with someone to actually realize how far you've come. Yeah. You know, and what you've been through. Yeah. Give yourself a pat on the back, everyone. Pat, pat, pat. Even, pat, you know, pat. you listening. Pat, 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 pat. <laughs> <laughs> What change have you experienced this year, listeners? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us. Tell us. We want to know. Twenty twenty three. Let's talk about twenty twenty three. What's twenty twenty three going to be like? Uh, have you to thought me, about this? I mean, it looks a bit blurry to me right now. I don't exactly know what's going to happen because I feel like you you have these expectations or you think how the year will mm. go, but it is completely different. Yeah, true. To what you thought would happen. Yeah, that's so don't true. Don't you think? Yeah. Every year is like that. Yeah, and expectations don't help anyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah seriously. Or what you think, it just changes. Yeah, I don't know. it does. I we- don't think – okay, maybe another question before we ask this. Yeah. Do you think there's ever been a year – in your life that you're just like, oh, yeah, there goes another year. That's like not much happened. You know what I mean? Like, oh, no. There's always, exactly, there's always like <laughs> things that were unexpected. Yeah. Okay, well, let me ask you a planned. counter question. Has there ever, ever been a year you think like, oh, it's going to be just another year and then your world flips that year? Like some, you just have this big change that you didn't expect – and your life completely flips. Kinda. Kinda. I think so. Yeah. A few. Mm. A few mm-hmm, years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You? Oh. Always. Yeah. yeah definitely. Not always. Not always. Not every year. I would but say definitely it happened a few to me years. like three two times, or three four times, times yeah. where it's like. What the hell? Yeah. What yeah. the hell? What was that? This is <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> well, actually COVID like 2020 was like what the hell, right? A little bit. For me, COVID was still... I don't know how this is going to come across, but like at least COVID was like everyone experienced it. Yeah, true, true, it was, true. I don't know. That's how it Mentally was for me. Mentally for me, I was fine. Mm-hmm. Like that was me and Sim's first year of dating. So it was actually great. Oh. <laughs> for us, like that also sounds bad, but it's like we that was like our relationship mm-hmm. incubation year. Like yeah. we just were incubation. Forced, forced to like – yeah grow yeah 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 into a couple but um yeah anyways definitely years that flipped and you're like what the hell just happened yeah yeah okay so now it's come i'm scared what's next year gonna so, be yeah exactly when you when you like? talk about next year i'm like oh what's next year's gonna be like mm. i don't know 
but I'm... I, you don't know? I don't know how. <laughs> I definitely don't know how next year is going to go. <laughs> like, I can't predict the future, but I hope it will be good and I feel like it will be exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as I quietly said, like hoping to do... to you know, venture into family stuff and thinking about babies and baby, one baby. But, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit scary to talk about because you never know what happens. But, yeah, I do want to start a family eventually. So a bit of planning needs to happen. Yeah. And I feel like that's a big change that's going to happen that I'm a bit scared about. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you? For me, I think 2023, so if this year or 2022 was a year where I stayed put and I focused on my career, I think this year I want to not stay put (laughs) in terms of like, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't want to stay put and I think my, basically what you had this year Mm-hmm. is what I want next year. Homey, homey building your own homey. home. Yeah. Yeah, so not necessarily like buying a place or yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. but I've been with my partner for I think 11 years now mm-hmm. and we've never actually rented like or moved out to a place, just the two of us before. Mm-hmm. We've always had housemates and at the moment we're both living with my parents mm-hmm. and – Honestly, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's yeah. really not easy. I think we like need to do another smart episode because on because it's smart cuz you're not like wasting money on mm. rent or anything, but mm. it's also very hard. It's so hard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But then it's smart but hard mm-hmm. in its own way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we definitely need to do an episode about but you're living ready. with parents. Yeah. Yeah, you're so, ready yeah. to have your own space. Yeah. I think next year is definitely going to be my building a home year. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what my home will look like, but I want it to be cozy. It's going to be so cozy. It's going to be so cozy. <laughs> and I want to have dinner parties. Like one thing I really miss is like inviting friends over and cooking mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. That's just something about me. Like mm. that's just who I've always been and not being able to do that. I feel like I miss it. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to do that and be able to just have my own space. And, you know, after work, I can just relax. (laughs) And if I don't want to eat dinner, I don't have to eat dinner. On the weekends, I can just chill (laughs) on the couch, do what I want to do, do some hobbies rather than like always having to you know, tiptoe around my parents. Like, not mm. necessarily tiptoe, but yeah. Well, I think that's just what like I want. When, when you live with them, it's like you just get roped into doing stuff with them, I feel. Not yeah. not that it's a bad thing, but yeah. it's just like, it's like default, you know? Yeah. Default, like, we'll have dinner together every day. But yeah. when you don't live with them, it's like, you know, you need to plan it and yeah. you actually talk to each other when yeah. you have dinner and then yeah. you fight less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I also want next year to be a year where I can – it's funny, right? Like I live with my parents now and you think that this year could be the year where we really like bond and all that, but I think it's actually going to be next year when I move out. Mm-hmm. We've definitely it – was, it was really nice to like live together and create memories together, but I think next year when we've moved out, me and Ryder were like, yeah, well, I think I want to eat dinner with them once a week. Yeah. And the Ryder's like, yeah, maybe twice a week, you know? Yeah, yeah. We just need that space. Yeah. Um, distance makes the heart grow fonder, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so sure. true. It's so true. So, yeah, that's for me next year. I think that's going to be the main thing, home. Mm-hmm. Home. Home. Oh, another thing is like we're getting like a camper van kind Ooh, of thing. So exciting. So I think we want to also try and – go on more adventures. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't really get to camp much, go camping much this year. So I definitely want to get back more into nature. Mm. Yeah, home, nature. And then I'm just going to check in a third one, but like move move my body more. Mm. I've just been, as I said, I've stayed put. put. I've stayed put <laughs> physically, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't move much. Mm-hmm. So I want to be able to like, add more movement into my mm. life whether it's like 
exercising or just going on more walks or just mm-hmm. being a little bit more active. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I think I think that's a good one. I will steal from you too. Like just yeah, getting into a routine, moving like ha- when it feels good for me, not just because everyone's doing mm. this one thing and I mm-hmm. feel like, oh, I should do that. Yeah, just doing something that feels comfortable for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, with health benefits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so if there's like one thing you could mm. wish for for next year. <laughs> if I had one wish. If you had one wish, <laughs> what what would you wish for next year? One wish. One wish. Uh, one mm. wish. I th- hope, I do wish to enjoying my first year of marriage and, you mm. know, just, you know, continuing, like you said, in the relationships episode you know just really like being there like working on it enjoying the relationship but also yeah putting work into it and just yeah having like just building that and keeping that there because I feel like you know it's a lifelong thing I feel like I don't know I feel like I just need to grow up a bit more I don't know or but also enjoy it I don't know it just so it's a kind of like it's a you, big part I feel are but, you sort of is your one wish sort of having like a really lovely like first year of marriage? Not like no? not like lovey dovey like it's 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 a you know fairy tale, but it's just mm. you know solid, you know, being feeling more solid and ready, I guess, if that makes sense. Just like happy, yeah, happy. Not 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 like he he he, you know, all the time, <laughs> 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 you know, but. I feel like probably for a lot of people as well, but I feel like if your relationship is good, that's one less thing to worry about in your life that's full of all this other crazy shit that comes Mm. into your, you know, if you have someone who's like really, yes, you can lean on. Like it's just a really important part of life, I feel, to get through all this other shit that you need to get through, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How about you? Here. Ah, uh, one wish. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, mine's going to be really simple. <laughs> I hope that I have enough, enough money to uh, put a deposit down on a place. Ooh. That's what I hope for next year. You got we'll this. see. You got I don't this. know. We'll see. But even if it's just like a small apartment or something, I think I really just want to own my own yeah. something yeah um, i believe in you yeah yeah that will be my wish yeah and i i i already know i'm gonna like listen back to this episode i'll be like oh, that, is that the one wish you had no. out of all the wishes but i think that's a really big um goal and yeah if, you know if you focus on it you can get there mm. you know yeah yeah focus i it would be really nice to bring like another really good season. Like season mm. two is better than season one. I know. You know, season one, we were just learning. I know. And we did great. We d- we're we doing great. Pat, pat, pat. Pat grateful, on the back. Grateful. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. We're going Maybe to uh, this honestly, look different, you know, yeah. we'll spruce it up a bit. Another big change. Who knows? Um, you know, maybe we'll have more guests. And I think we'll have different topics as well. Different we'll topics. be going into a different phase into our lives. Yeah. Wow. Anything yeah. could happen. Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> and your ears, ears open. open. <laughs> Let's move on to our next segment. Let's, Let's get, get nourished. Okay. Cool. So, Rox got us some soup and it's a Korean instant soup. What does it and say? And it says, Pibiko hook im cha hook. 
<clears throat> Fugim Chajuk, black sesame porridge. I've never tried it, but you know, I, did you know I love black sesame? I love black sesame ice cream. I love black sesame ice cream. I love the Chinese yumcha thing with the sesame, with the black sesame inside. Oh, yeah. I love、um, the little Chinese mochi balls with the black sesame inside. Like in the hot. Oh, I made it for you in my room. Oh, I didn't make <gasps> yes, it. Yes. We just made it. Hot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that. I love that. Yeah, I'm going to take、We're、a like, first、mm. bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got this because it reminds me of Zima、um, Wu. In Chinese, it's called black sesame porridge as well. But I think the Korean version has like other stuff in it. Similar to the red bean. You know how there's a Korean version of red bean soup? Then we have our own version. What's it like? Is it ill? Your face looks funny. <laughs> Your face is like.、Um, I love black sesame. Like you.、Mm. But I don't like this soup.、Mm. It's not sweet enough. I think it's savory. Yeah. Do you think so?、Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's not sweet enough. I don't really like I it. I don't like it. This is the first soup I don't like. I'm so sorry. This no, is not the finale. <laughs> no, but at least people will know that we're honest with our soup section. Like, if it's bad, we're going to have to say it's bad. It's not the best. So, there's this like instant packet of the Chinese version. I'll make that for you one day. <laughs> I can't have this. Okay. We'll have to end the year with a better soup than that <laughs> next time. Oh, wow. I tried it. Yeah. Thanks for buying it. <laughs> I feel bad. Why? Don't feel But bad. But we tried it. Yeah. And yeah. not every soup is wonderful. No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> well, thank you guys for tuning in to the、listening. last episode of season one. Mm-hmm. Thank you for, you know, if you've listened to every one of our episodes in season one, thank you so much. We hope we were somewhat, even if you listened to one episode, we, we hope it was entertaining. Entertaining. You have some cozy vibes from the podcast. And yeah, hopefully, yeah, let us know like what you thought of season one or what you want to hear more about in season two、mm-hmm. next year. And stay safe, everyone. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.